I just finished building out this project, which is a clone of a board game my wife and I have been playing a lot recently, and I wasn't planning on sharing anything about this project, but I realized that the actual reason I chose this project and the techniques I used when I built this project are really important to share because they can help you on your web development journey. So in this video, I want to be talking about how to choose the proper project that aligns with your goals, how you can use your projects to teach yourself specific things about programming or web development, and how you can use things like AI tools inside of your projects to accelerate whatever you're trying to work towards on this particular project. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the very first step is obviously choosing what project you want to build, but most people actually mess this step up because they don't think about the goals for the project they're building. So many people ask me, what project should I build? Top 10 projects to build. And they search for these things and whatever they see, they just build that project. But if you don't have a goal in mind for your project, it's going to be not very fun and you're probably gonna give up on it. So instead, try to analyze what your goals are. Some examples of goals would be you're building a project to start a business. Maybe you're building a project purely for fun, you might be building a project for your resume, or you're building a project that is going to help you learn something in particular. Generally, you're gonna have one primary goal and maybe a couple other secondary goals on top of that. For this particular project, my primary goal was I wanted it to be a project that was fun for me to build, and my secondary goal was I wanted to learn something from this project. And I had a specific thing I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how the actual complex card interactions in these style of games are actually programmed on the back end. So I wanted to learn the more logical back end state management side of this project. I didn't really care very much about the UI. As you can see, it's not very beautiful, but really I was focusing on that back end portion for the learning. Now I could have chose a million different card games to try to emulate that implement these different complex back end logic, but I ended up choosing this one because I have intimate knowledge of how the game works. I've played it a lot with my wife. I even built like a whole expansion of the game based on Lord of the Rings, just because I thought it would be fun. So this is something I had a lot of skill in that particular area. And another reason I chose this is I realized that it's a quite simple version of what I want to build. It's something that I could build in React and web development languages that I'm familiar with. So I have a lot of that other stuff taken care of. The only part I'm not sure about is how all the complex logic works. So this is a great project for me because the stuff that I want to learn is the stuff I don't know and all the other stuff I have a pretty strong familiarity with. Another reason I chose this project is it'll help me build up to those more complex projects. For example, a game like Slay the Spire I think would be really cool and fun to make, but that's a more complex game, a lot of more moving parts. It's got art, animation, all that other stuff that I don't know anything about. So I thought this, this was a good middle ground where I can learn a part of what I will need to build a game like Slay the Spire in a safe environment where everything else I already kind of know about. Now, once you have a project that meets your goals, the next step is to start writing your code. And I wanna jump into the code for this project so I can start explaining different techniques that I use that allow me to focus on the core things I wanna learn while essentially ignoring everything else, which really accelerated the speed that I got this project done and accelerated the amount that I learned as well. So right now I just kind of have a version of the application up. We'll dive into the code in just a second, but I wanna kind of mention a little bit about my thought process going into this. And I mentioned earlier that the UI was really not that important to me. I built tons of UIs and overall, there's not too much complex going on in this particular UI. Honestly, the thing that I spent the most amount of time on was the hand UI, especially when it comes to horizontal cards. There are certain cards that are horizontal. They flip around inside the hand. So I spent almost all of the actual development on the UI, specifically on this section and pretty much everything else, maybe this tooltip I spent a little, little bit of time on, but pretty much everything else I spent almost no time on developing. And you'll notice that because it's entirely not mobile responsive. As you can see, this looks horrible when I go down to mobile screen sizes. And even if my screen is just slightly shorter, it, everything falls off the side of the screen. So really, I built this game to only fit my monitor size. I didn't worry at all about responsiveness because again, that's not the point of this. It's not a project I plan on sharing. So I really made sure to focus my time on the things that are important and minimize the time I spent on the actual UI because it's really easy when you're building a project to start diving in and you start to notice edge cases with things and you want to polish everything as you go along. But if you know that I'm not building this application to have a fancy UI, you can spend way less time on the UI, get it good enough, and then just not worry about it until either after you're done with everything else or just not worry about it at all. So with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and dive into the code itself. We'll kind of minimize this over here. And for this particular project, I ended up choosing React to build it. And the main reason I chose React is I'm quite familiar with React and I thought it would be more useful to use React than just like raw TypeScript inside of an application, mostly because there's a lot of complex state stuff going on and React has some tools built in to help you with managing complex state. 
Now there are pros and cons to the way that I did this with React, but I'm gonna go over all of that in just a bit. Now kind of the first tip that I wanna give you is if you're trying to build a project specifically to focus on a learning portion and you don't care about the rest of it, this is a great use case for AI. I ended up using AI very heavily for building out the UI of my application, minus those few sections I talked about spending more time on, because I didn't care about the UI, I just wanted to get it out of the way as quickly as I could. So I used AI a lot to write pretty much all of this different UI code, and as you can see, it's a mess. I have a ton of different components inside of here. You can see I just have random components spread all over the place for the UI, and it's really not super clean or nice code at all, but that's okay. Like I said, I don't care about the UI. It can be the ugliest, least clean, non-performant UI code in the entire world. It doesn't matter to me. I can come through and clean it up if I want, but overall this UI code was just here to give me something to look at so I could actually go about testing the game itself and testing the important logic parts that I cared about. So all of this UI code, I pretty much generated through AI, except for there's a few actual components that I built myself. For example, this hand of cards, like I said, I spent a lot of time making this because the AI pretty much failed every time I asked it to do anything, and I wanted to be rather specific. There are some pitfalls to run into when it comes to using AI for something like this, though. I was kind of vibe coding a little bit at the beginning when I was building out the UI for this project, because I was like, I want to just scaffold a really simple project to get started. And if we just kind of bring back what this actual UI looks like. I pretty much told the AI, hey, I wanna have like a hand of cards down here. I wanna have like a discard, a deck. I wanna have this row in the middle with its own deck and some other stuff. I pretty much told it to build all these things piece by piece and it was building them out just fine. I was able to make tweaks and overall it was looking relatively good. And then I realized that it had built so much code and most of the code was quite terrible to be honest that I was having a hard time figuring out where things were and dealing with it. So by purely vibe coding my way through, I spent probably a couple hours building out a relatively simple version of the UI. I realized that the code was a complete mess, especially as I started to add logic into it. I was having AI try to help me with some of the logic and it did not know what to do at all. So I realized that just trying to use the AI for a very large bulk of my code was not working very well at all. And I ended up completely scrapping that project after maybe a half a day of work, like four hours or so. I decided to completely start over from scratch. And instead of trying to have the AI build large portions of the app for me, I would have it build small individual things and then put those into the actual project myself. So I would say, hey, build me out a component for a hand of cards. It would build that out. I would tweak it. I would make all the changes I need. And then I would insert that into the correct place in my application. Same thing here. I'd be like, hey, you know, what? give me this little tracker on the right hand side here. I would have it build that out. I would make small tweaks to it. And then I would boom, put that in the correct place inside of the code. And the important thing is, since I was trying to learn the logic of this application, I made sure not to use any AI at all for the logic portion of the Apple application, because that's what I'm trying to learn, and I don't want the AI just to write that out for me. So a good takeaway here is it's great to use AI to build out certain things for you that you don't really care as much about, but make sure that you do it in smaller chunks and that you make sure to actually fine tune and tweak and understand what code the AI is writing, because if you spend too much time having it generate code for you, eventually you're gonna get to the point where you don't understand any of the code, and you're gonna have to completely start from scratch, or you're gonna spend more time trying to learn the code than if you just wrote it yourself to begin with. A great example of the AI being absolutely terrible is originally I asked it to create a deck and a discard. And if I move my camera real quick, you can see that the discard pile is on the left, or the deck, I'm sorry, is on the right, left hand side and the discard pile is on the right hand side. So they're quite small, but they are there. And I essentially asked it to create a deck and a discard pile. And it did just that and it created it, but it put them side by side. And I said, hey, can you actually move this and put the deck on one side and the discard pile on the other side? And originally when it created this component that had the deck and the discard, it essentially had a component that rendered out the deck and it rendered out the discard. And when I asked it to split it, instead of taking this and turning it into two separate components, instead it rendered both of these things. So it kept it in the same component and rendered it on both sides of the hand. And it literally just passed in a prop that was essentially true false, whether or not it rendered one of these or not. So it would just say if whatever, then it would render the deck. Otherwise it would render the discard. So literally it was rendering both components and just swapping between them with an if statement. Horrible code, I would never recommend writing code like that. I literally laughed out loud when I saw how terrible the code that the AI was writing. And that was kind of when I got to the point where I was like, okay, maybe I need to stop vibe coding this so hard and actually spend some time coding this because the code I'm getting is absolute garbage. Now that's not to say that all AI is bad. When I was going through and planning out the different techniques for how I'm going to structure all the data inside my application and all the different workflow for my state management, this is something that I'm not super familiar with. As you can see, I have a rather complex reducer in here with absolute tons of logic in all of these different states that do exactly what I want everything to do. And being able to manage and understand all this different state was something, again, I'm not familiar with. I've never built something like this before. I built lots of web applications, but it's a very different process. So I actually used AI a lot as something to ask questions to. I would say, hey, 
I'm trying to build this particular thing. What are different techniques that you would recommend for doing this? Like maybe storing state or doing different things like that. And I would take in that feedback from what it told me as well as what I found from research and online. And I was able to compile that and test it against different scenarios. If I ran into problems, I would go to it and be like, hey, I was using this particular technique and I noticed it's very difficult to do X, Y, or Z. Is there something I can do to make this easier? It would sometimes give me suggestions, sometimes give me a bunch of garbage. You know, you really had to filter through it, but it would really help me with figuring out different ways to structure things in my application at a higher level. I found it was quite good at that overall for the most part. So really the main takeaway from this when it comes to AI is to use the AI to help you build out the things that are not part of your goals. The things that just get you from point A to point B, AI is great at doing those different things for you, but make sure that you supervise what it does. And also if you're trying to learn something, AI is a great way to bounce off of and be like, hey, I'm trying to do this particular thing. What are your recommendations? What do you think I should do? Asking it questions is honestly super underrated because most people just use it to write code, but it's also really great at being a conversation tool to try to spark new ideas and figure out new ways to approach different topics. Now, the next thing to focus on is your goal of the project. Like I said, for this project, my goal was to learn the actual ins and outs of how these different state management, everything works. And I probably spent 75 to 80% of my time on this project going through and managing different things in state. And I probably went through three, four or five different ways of managing my state inside this project. I originally started with more of a class-based way, but of course, React doesn't really like classes as much as it does like, you know, actual objects and so on because it likes that immutability. So I kind of ran into some problems there, swapped over to a more immutability based way, obviously ran into some problems there, tweaked around how I was doing things, stored cards different ways as classes, then I changed them to like JSON objects, tons of different changes for how I did this. And you may look at that and think, oh, that's really inefficient. You could have just done it the first way and just kind of worked through it and been fine. But my goal was to learn from this project. So if your goal is to learn something, spend time trying different ways of doing the exact same thing. Refactor your code often because that's going to help teach you different ways to do things. And it's going to give you insight into the best way to do this because your goal here is learning and not actually building a final project. Now, one thing that I find really helps when it comes to thinking of all these different ways to approach a project is to think about the data of your project and the flow of that data or how the user interacts with that data. Usually this involves databases if you're working in like a web application, but this project doesn't have a database. So I went straight to my TypeScript types to start this. And pretty much all these different types that you see in all these different files, this is where I started out with building my project was diving into, okay, what do the types look for everything in my project? Because that essentially gave me what the data of my application looks like. And then I could think about, okay, how am I using this data inside my project to perform different actions and do different things? So I was able to think about all the different edge cases, think about all the different things that needed to happen in my application. I did all that inside of the data here. And the nice thing is, is that this data for the most part didn't change too much between the different ways that I stored my application and used my logic. Of course, the way I actually stored my data inside of like classes versus objects changed a little bit and how I actually interacted with that data changed drastically, but overall the actual data itself and the workflow did not change much between time to time. So if you spend that extra upfront effort thinking about what your data looks like and what the flow of your data looks like, that can really help you with finding what the best technique is. Obviously you're gonna forget things and then you're gonna realize halfway through building your project, oh, I forgot this huge chunk of my project. I need to refactor something to put that in there, but that's perfectly okay and completely normal. And it's going to help you going forward to be like, okay, I ran into this problem this first time. Now I know about this thing. So I hopefully won't run into this problem in the future next time I plan out my data workflow. Another thing that's really important if you are trying to learn is to focus on the simplest aspects first and then use the complex things later on. But make sure you keep those complex things in the back of your mind. In this particular example, there's lots of different cards that do really, really complex things. Like if we look at some of these, you know, there's lots and lots of data that goes into some of these things that are very complex. While other things are very, very simple. If we, you know, find something that's quite simple, you can look at this, it's incredibly simple. So it's really important to make sure you start with the simple things, but also keep in the back of your mind what the actual needs of some of the more complex things are going to be. That'll help make sure that you consider these things that are complex inside your data structure while being able to focus purely on the simple things to make sure that when you first start implementing things, you have this simple case to work with first. Most likely, if you start with the simple stuff and your application gets significantly more complex, you will need to make tweaks and refactors to your code, but that's perfectly okay because if you start with the most complex, then you're gonna easily get overwhelmed. Now, this next point I wanna make is going to be a little bit controversial, and that is that it's okay if you don't spend a lot of time polishing or even fully finishing your application. Because remember, if we look at the goals of your application, mine in particular was a goal of fun and a goal of learning. Nowhere in that goal was build a resume project or build something I'm going to sell to someone. It was have fun and learn something. So even if I never finished this project, as long as I enjoyed the process and I learned something from it, that is all I really cared about. 
For this particular project, I did end up completely finishing it, but I would say about 80% of the way through the project, I got to the point where I was like, you know what, I feel like I've really learned everything that I want to learn from this project. I still wanted to finish it because I was having fun building the project, but instead of making sure I meticulously went through and refactored things to make them work with more, you know, things in the future to make sure they're really future proof. Instead, I was like, you know what? I'm okay if I just hack this thing in to make that 1% extra that I need to have done. Like I was at 99% of the way done and I just needed to do that last 1%. There was like three cards I needed to implement. I was like, I'll just hack in a solution real quick. It's okay if it's not super amazing or perfect. It's the very end of the project. I kind of want to be done with it because again, like I said, I've met the goals that I had for the project. And that was especially evident in a lot of these like cards here. These ones I implemented very late on, and there's a lot of them that are kind of really one-off hacky things that I wouldn't have done if I spent the time at the beginning to build these. But like I said, I was kind of at the end where the goal was being met. And I can't tell you how many projects I've built in my lifetime where I'd never actually finished building any of the projects at all. I got maybe 50%, 60%, or even only like 20% of the way done with the project, but I reached my goal with that project. So I said, there's no need for me to finish building this project. Now it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because you generally want to make sure that you're finishing the projects that you're building because if you end up not finishing any projects you build, there's a certain amount of skill going from the 80% to 100%. You need to learn to be able to get a project polished and finished. That's a certain skill set right there. But unless that is your goal to learn that skill set, it's okay not to finish a project. And don't feel bad if you have a ton of projects in your GitHub that are completely abandoned. Really what you want to make sure that you do is that you choose a project that aligns with the goals that you have. You then can utilize tools such as AI to help you get through the things you don't care about, to spend more time focusing on the goals that you do care about, and just know that the end result is not the project itself, it is the actual goals you had. Whether your goals were to learn something, have fun, sell a project, build a resume, it doesn't matter. As long as you accomplished your goals, that's the important part and the actual finishing of the project is secondary to those actual goals. Now, I know this is quite a bit different than my normal video, but I really thought there was some knowledge in here that you could really learn and use in your own projects. And if you did enjoy this video, let me know down below. Just leave a comment letting me know you enjoyed it or anything you would want me to change in this particular video. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.